Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. I'm Irene Birunji Mugisha. This week we're exploring the country's infrastructure sector. Rwanda has achieved remarkable economic growth post-1994, averaging double-digit figures for the past 10 years. That's thanks to sound government policies enshrined in the Vision 2020 blueprint that has restored macroeconomic stability and reduced poverty. One of the main priority areas of Vision 2020 is infrastructure development, and now we take a closer look at the current state of the sector, focusing on the strides made not only in the Chigali city, but Rwandan outskirts as well. About 7.5% of Rwanda's annual budget is committed to infrastructure development. Government has invested approximately $700 million in transport, energy, ICT and other infrastructure over the past three years with a specific focus on reducing the cost of doing business. These efforts have seen Rwanda climb the World Bank's doing business rankings over the past few years with the country the highest ranked within the East African community in 2012. Central to all economic development is the infrastructure. You cannot develop industry without energy. You cannot develop industry without uh, water. You cannot, uh, cannot increase the quality of life without supplying some of these uh, infrastructure issues. So we, at uh, the last retreat, we presented our plan, our strategy, how we're going to do this, what we're going to deliver. We put up, uh, we put up uh, aims and uh, put up milestones, what we need to achieve at what time in each area of the infrastructure level. If, if Rwanda has to continue at the growth rate of 11.5%, to reach the EDPRS targets. We believe that uh, we have to play a key role in all these areas. Infrastructure is a neighbor, of course. It is a neighbor for development, for economic growth, for investment. We, uh, as the city, uh, plan for basic infrastructure, like roads. Uh, for instance, in line with uh, the implementation of master, our master plan, in these four years, we've managed to construct 80, 80 kilometers of roads, uh, well paved with tarmac, and uh, in uh, five years to come, we plan to double. Rwanda government has. Uh made key, clear choices to invest heavily strategically in infrastructure. Hence, the airline, the, the new Jesera International Airport that was, will, be, will be commencing construction this year. We are one of the key infrastructure development projects that the government embarked on three years ago that uh, has changed the, would I say, the face and perspe perception of the country. In order to drive its infrastructure projects, the Rwandan government established an independent Ministry of Infrastructure in 2002 and has also put several simultaneous bodies in place like the Rwanda Transport Development Agency, Rwanda Housing Authority and Rwanda Development Board. If we put all things together, that by next June we should add online another 80 megawatt of energy. And eventually, we are hoping that by the year 2017, at the end of EDPRS2, we are hoping to add on another 560 megawatts. And we believe this can uh, make a lot of difference. And obviously, we get, as soon as we get some of these things, we get rid of the, the, the thermal power stations, which are very costly. As on the execution, uh, you know, we have to make sure we have the right people, we have to make sure uh, um, you know, uh, we attract more and more investors, uh, and we attract them and retain them. Uh, of course, you know, uh, Iwasa being uh, uh, one of the largest employees in the country, you can imagine there's a domino effect. We've been doing very well in terms of, um, uh, of uh, revenue collection, especially on the electricity side. Uh, we want to bring that as well on the water side. We've come just to give, we come a long way. If we come, we came from literally uh, um, 50 or 100,000 connection to, we tripled the connectivity in the, in the last two years. Uh, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a good achievement, but it's not enough. 
you know, we have to really quadruple it. One of the biggest investors in the, the real estate. And the real estate is uh, an important investment because it's the most visible. So we have already built uh, quite a number of estates in Rwanda. Vision 2020 is well known. In Agatriro, we have Umutu Estate, which is more recent, and also a number of commercial buildings. And we have a huge real estate uh, investment project, which is uh, called Vision City, high-end. It's going to be around 4,000 units, with a variety of products uh, ranging from luxury villa to apartment to townhouse. But it's going to be a new city with school, commercial center. The revitalized Rwanda, commonly known as the land of thousand hills, has breathtaking green landscapes and accommodates a population of 11 million. The terrain and growing population requires strategic planning from government in terms of urbanization, road networks, affordable power, and housing and availability of clean water. Our infrastructure backbone, uh, much as we've done a lot and, and achieved quite a lot in terms of infrastructure development, we still need to invest quite a lot more in it. Uh, we need to establish a central sewer system. We need to improve our public transport system. All these you know, are infrastructure-based um, developments that have to take place. So we have quite a lot of uh, infrastructure development ahead of us to be able to successfully uh, achieve you know, a sustainable city. It's very important that in our project we take uh, into consideration the land that we have in Rwanda, which is limited in, uh, in size. So it's now important that we have we present the model of building apartments and people to start learning, living into apartments. We're also going to do low-cost housing in Batsinda. That one is a limited investment, 300 units. We're trying to see how we can build apartment, but for people with less revenue, but where they can live with dignity. In order to achieve its Vision 2020 goals, government is investing heavily in human capital, not only to create employment, but to also carry out its ambitious infrastructure projects. The ministry has to base on their strategy of developing the infrastructure based on EPRS and also based on Vision 2020. How do you, how do you manage that? Unfortunately, what, what has been happening now is that uh, a lot of uh, projects which are developed sometimes are ad hoc. Somebody is interested to do a geothermal project, he can look, I can assist you to develop a geothermal project. Or I can assist you to develop a, a 10 megawatt a solar plant. Or I can assist you to develop a, a whatever. But are they connected to our development plans? So eventually we want to put up a strategy in the ministry on the development of the infrastructure based on the vision 2020 and EDPRC. Is we live in a region where there's a, there's a serious power deficit, uh, so there's a, an opportunity there. We're very active in the East African power pool. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we have to build this transmission line, this regional project. And uh, they, they've begun already. There are many projects ongoing, connecting uh, all the way from Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda. Tanzania, all the way to Rwanda, uh, and DRC, and Burundi. So there are these transmission line projects that we're closely monitoring, we're actively participating with the help of the World Bank, the KFW, uh, African Development Bank, uh, EU, and others. Uh, so we just have to make sure these projects are going online much faster uh, than before. As the country opens its borders with the East African Community Regional Bloc, there are a lot of opportunities for investors to invest in infrastructure. Government has made huge strides in regulating the sector and also provides investment incentives. There are some uh, uh, regional projects which we are working on. Uh, there is the issue of um, uh, Rusumo, which is a, a target for about 80 megawatts of power connectivity. And for this, we are working with the countries like uh, you know, Rwanda, no, uh, Burundi, and Tanzania, the Rusumo project. At the same time, at the Rusumo, if I'm talking about Rusumo, for increasing trade between our two countries, we are putting up another bridge at the Rusumo, uh, crossing the Rusumo River. At the same time, I think all border stops now, we are putting up what they call one border, one stop 
border posts. If we generate extra power, we can, we can sell it to the region. And uh, we're looking at power trading. I mean, there's some, uh, uh, some concept and feasibility studies that have been made on this regional grouping that look at how we can uh, bring power from, uh, we can have an exchange market, you know, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and really create pause of uh, industrialization. If Rwanda is going to become another hub in the region, then we had to put in place, or government had to put in place, infrastructure that meets the standards, hence the Bujasera International Airport. Its initial capacity first phase is going to be capable of holding more than three million passengers. That is something sizable if you compare it with uh, what we've had before. But this is going to be scalable to up to six to seven million going forward. It will house all the kind of uh, uh, infrastructure in terms of terminals, in terms of cargo holds, in terms of... Uh, think about anything that you find uh, around an international uh, state-of-the-art airport. Uh, Bujesera will have it. So it's going to completely change the face of the country again. And of course, it will uh, pass to the next level. Despite the country's phenomenal growth, Rwanda still faces a number of challenges. These include limited access to capital for infrastructure development, the high cost of housing construction, and the shortage of skilled labor. Our skilled engineers are very stretched, uh, but uh, uh, you know we are putting uh, ways to work with uh, the universities. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about this uh, WDA Workforce Development Authority, so we can get more and more uh, people coming from the ranks and from the schools. Uh, we, are, we are creating collaborations with uh, this institution of higher learning, the technical schools, so that they train the skills that we need. Uh, so there's been a two-way communication. Um, uh, of course, this is a, it's a challenge, but it's an opportunity. The capital that's required sometimes is not uh, um, easily available. Um, the expertise, the expertise sometimes you have to depend on, uh, on, uh, on people, the, the, the skilled uh, people coming from, from, from the region and even, uh, even beyond. So those are a few challenges, but the way things are turning up is, is catching up very fast. Rwandans are picking up and, and the, the needed skills are, are getting uh, more available. We are, uh, have the challenge of the fact that we do not have alternative construction technologies outside here. Uh, there's limited construction materials, though we are exploiting uh, in uh, different alternatives together with the Ministry of Infrastructure and uh, the Rwanda Housing Authority. But we need to look for a construction technology and construction materials that will make uh, construction much cheaper. Yeah, right now it's quite expensive and uh, ultimately that feeds into the end user and then the affordability component becomes a challenge, uh, whether it's housing, whether it is a commercial space. Either way, you find that um, you know, if the cost of construction is expensive, ultimately the cost of ownership or rental also goes high. Randa is looking to overcome these challenges through innovative incentive schemes like the Chigali Special Economic Zone. Phase 1 covers 96 hectares located in Gasabo district and will host the industrial park which is due for relocation from Chikondo to Kichukiro district. The government of Rwanda has the mandate to invest heavily in infrastructure and to maintain infrastructure development in in, as, a, as a way of, of course, enhancing the, the SEZ program, S Special Economic Zones program. This is very key because, you know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a serious mandate. It requires heavy investment. And, of course, for investors, you know, we say that for them to, to get attracted here, first of all is for them to have serviced land and then uh, the development of infrastructure. When we talk of infrastructure here, we are speaking of, of sewage or water treatment. We are speaking of water itself, installation of pipes and so on. We are speaking of electricity or energy. We are speaking of roads. 
and we are speaking of fiber installation or fiber optic for communication. So all of them, as we speak today in the first phase, uh, we have we are standing at about 98%, so it is almost complete. Rwanda also recently launched the Chigali City Master Plan, an innovative urban development plan that government hopes will transform the capital city into a services-oriented model global city. The plan focuses on better preservation of nature and the use of natural cycles to provide efficient infrastructure. It also aims to improve informal settlements and create new developments in open spaces. When you talk about green city, you look at uh, the type of infrastructure that is being uh, developed. Does it uh, support uh, the use of um, good energy sources or does it maximize our limited energy sources? Uh, do we look at ways where we can recycle uh, rainwater or even the water that we use, wastewater? And it, it looks at uh, several different components. How do you design your building so that you can encourage uh, the use of natural ventilation, natural lighting? Uh, then the, obviously there's a component of uh, the greening, as we said, having a green um, uh, offset where you have uh, well-defined de and designed landscapes. And when we start to talk about defined and designed landscapes, then you start to look at um, how is your infrastructure designed to support pedestrian movement so that you don't have a lot of vehicular um, traffic, which you know, you know leads into the carbon emission and other elements that avoid or, or hinder a place from becoming a green city. Well, Vision City, as I said, is in Gatridiro. We own around 150 hectares. It's a huge project, but we are going to construct it in phases. The first phase is 500 units. We have a short list of already 2,500 people, so it is in high demand. We, as I said, the plan is to do a new city with churches, schools, and uh, shopping center, really modern, but uh, catering to a range of, of people. We are going, as I said, to build five-star villa, five-bedroom villa, overseeing the golf, and really the, the high end. And then we have townhouse, three-bedroom, four-bedroom villas, and apartment, ranging from one bedroom to four bedroom. But the most important is, of course, the quality of the finishing and the place we want to give value to our investment because we bought the plot and it is quite expensive and to have a good return we have to give quality. It's a very good environment, I may say, because um, one, there are laws. There are laws if, if, you, if you're investing, um, you know the incentives that are there. You, you don't have to hustle to, to get uh, things done. Um, the, the banks, the banks access to finance is very easy and, and uh, surprisingly, it takes a very short time to, to raise finances if, 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 if you need uh, finances from the, from the local banks, if you have a good plan. Um, the, the other thing is, is, um, is government, government having defined exactly what gov uh, what, what's needed through this Vision 2020. You, you have plans, you, you, know, you know what's required. So it, it, you don't have to, businesses don't have to, to hustle to, to, to really figure out exactly what's required. So it becomes very easy to fit in.